I'm, I'm his best friend. He's from my neighborhood. Got him. Go on ahead. This is called waiting for someone. Somewhere in the northwest region of Seattle, Washington, there's a homeless man armed with a beer can trying to drink away war memories, waiting for someone selfless enough to lend him an ear. He sits on the side of a pizzeria on the corner of Queen Anne and Mercer in a chair they probably kick him out of after business hours. His skin has grown all too fond of the concrete beds that he rests his shell-shot head on. His braggadocious body rocks back and forth showing off to the world the only gifts war veterans ever receive. He addresses me. Hey, little bruh, you got a dollar? Without even checking my pockets, I tell him, I ain't got it. Having anticipated disappointment, he responds with, well, that's fine, because I really wanted a 20. <laughs> Amazed. Not that he still knows what humor is, but that is one of the few possessions that the war actually let him keep. I laugh before digging into my coat pocket filled with a ton of change I'll probably never use. He lets me know that more than a 20, what he really wanted was a conversation and takes my 75 cent donation as an invitation to start one. Without offering much space for me to converse, he lets me know how in this country, war veterans are rarely anything more than patriotic flies on a wall and that for all these people to ignore his request is just as second nature as swatting at a pest. I guess none of them realize that here lies their tax dollars at work. His body jerks to the percussion of his bones, dancing to the song of post-traumatic stress syndrome. How wrong is it of humans to lack humanity, demanding he keep his lips locked but possess the audacity to ask where we got his army cap or to think it's a trinket you can purchase at a gift shop he tells me that they've labeled him as crazy and they say he has to take medicine called Percodon but the one time he took it and made him high so why would he continue when it makes his mind worse with time it seems like the perfect crime having people fight for a country that won't fight for them the goal was for one of those countries to take his life from him and the opposing country failed when he returned to civilization but the home country would succeed by stripping him of his home how long would this be the standard in this country, where if war doesn't kill you, they distill you, send you back home just to rot and mildew. The phrase, war was good for absolutely nothing, is still true. Before he lets me go, he tells me that he wants to die. And I see a tear-shaped white flag surrender from his eye. I give him a pound before digging back into my coat pocket, surrendering the rest of the change I found. I tell him I have to go, because there's a white man screaming at me through traffic, waiting for me to end this conversation. There's a young lady at a bar and grill across the street, waiting for me to join her for dinner. And there's a poem, scratching at the insides of my soul, waiting for me to tell his story.